Cool. So you got you got quite a few. Yes. All right. I got my popcorn ready. I, I want to hear these stories. Okay, <laughs> we are. Um, we're live on Facebook. I think we can start it or awesome. not yet. Yeah, Just yeah. Giving you a heads up that we're live on Facebook. So, and then let me go back. Begin recording. I'm going to just start recording before we forget. Um, uh, is it on the computer or on the cloud? On the cloud. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and admit people. Yes, please. Introduction. Okay, we're good there. We're up to. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Raul, the realtor here at Lepid Wall Properties. With me, I have my awesome colleague, Claudia Lomelik. Claudia, go ahead and introduce yourself for us, please. Hi, guys. Thank you, Raul. Thank you guys for joining and being so punctual. I love it. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of good information for everyone today. So thank you for joining. For sure, for sure. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, wait, these guys are realtors. What are they here going to teach me about homeowners insurance? Well, don't worry. We actually have Juanita here, our insurance specialist, to cover everything that there is to know with homeowners insurance and how to keep you out of trouble. Juanita, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Juanita and I'm an insurance agent. I've been in the industry for over 30 years. So definitely I have a couple of things that you want to look at. So, um, you know, I look forward to giving you some information. So thank you. Awesome. 30 years. So uh, you're just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Just, That's awesome. Let, let me take a minute to post really quick that we're live on social media. So, just, and that would give a couple more people to join us. Um, yeah, still admitting the last few folks into here, but we do appreciate you being on time and punctual. Yeah. Um, do you want me to share the presentation or? Yeah, I think that would be a good time to get started with that, at least the first section that we'll cover. Yeah. Okay. Before we get to the nitty gritty of everything that Juanita has in store for us. Yeah. Uh, just one more minute. Um posting this sure thing so as you may be aware we do host two workshops real estate related uh every single month so two workshops a month and we invite you to these workshops via email. So if you're not currently getting our monthly email with all of our workshops, go ahead and uh, feel free to just throw your email into the chat or email it or chat with me directly or with Claudia. That way we can get you registered for our upcoming emails to invite you to all of our workshops. We also have a newsletter monthly that goes out. So that way you're in the know of what's happening in this real estate market as well. But thank you, Claudia, for pulling this up for us. So Lepitenwa Properties presents homeowners insurance. And the question is, if you're a homeowner, are you covered? So here we have Voltaire Lepe. He's the CEO of Lepitenwa Properties, our lead broker over here. And you also have the rest of the Lepitenwa family over here. So if at any point you have any questions, feel free to just unmute yourself, throw it in the chat, or reach out to your favorite Lepitenwa agent, and we'll be able to help get all of your questions answered. All right. Claudia loves social media. So why don't you tell us a little bit about these handles over here? Yes. So also, if you are not following us on our social media, please do so. We are on Instagram, Facebook, and um, we show you some real estate content, personal content, and things that happen around the city. Yeah. And, yeah. I know For you sure. mentioned reviews already, right? Or and I don't think we can mention that enough, just because your feedback is the most valuable feedback, whether we're doing something great or whether we can do something a little bit better, we'd love to hear from you. So here you're going to see um, emails and some Yelp and Google reviews that we would love for you to go and give us some feedback. So Claudia, if you can throw in those links into the chat for everybody to just click and give us some feedback as to how we are doing on this workshop, that would be amazing. 
Yes, I will do that right awesome. now. Awesome. Oh, sorry, I forgot it was up. Yeah, no worries. Multitasking. <laughs> so while Claudia's throwing those links into the chat, let's talk a little bit about what's happening in the real estate market. So inventory. We're supposed to have in this time of year anywhere between six to eight thousand homes on the market. Today we're sitting at 2,076 homes, and we're actually down six percent since April when it comes down to inventory. So inventory is scarce right now. When we're looking at demand, there's actually been a three percent decrease since April in terms of demand. Last year demand was 140 percent more than it was today. But in short, there's still a lot more buyers than there are houses to go around. Now, market time. A seller's market is when a house is selling within 90 days or less. From the moment that the, uh, the owner puts a for sale by owner or puts his for sale sign on the front lawn to the moment that they have an accepted offer. It usually takes about 90 days or less for it to be a seller's market. Anything less than 60 days is a hot seller's market. Today, we're sitting at 29 days on the market, which means we're at a hot, hot seller's market. And market time right now is really being driven by the low amount of inventory because there's way more buyers than there are in houses to sell. A lot of buyers are going to the same homes and thus making them fly off the shelf a little bit faster than what they normally would be. Now, when we're talking foreclosures and short sales, a lot of people are comparing this market back to 2008, 2009, Great Recession, when the housing market crashed. One of the biggest factors is that back then there was over 16,000 homes for sale and over 8,000 of those were distressed families, people in a foreclosure, short sell situation, essentially losing their homes to the bank. Today, we have three foreclosures and zero short sales. So we have three total distressed families in all of San Diego County. And we're talking a county of 3.3 million people. So three families in the distressed situation, that's not a lot. So that tells us that people in today's market can actually afford their homes. And when we look at the other impacts, and when we look at the other impacts of the inventory, we look at new builds. So inventory, when we look at it, they're only building about 4,000 new homes year over year. So I wouldn't anticipate a lot of houses hitting the market through new construction as well. But that's the quick at a glance real estate market update. And there we are. Claudia, go ahead and go to the next one. And then we... Would you want to introduce Juanita again, since we have new um, guest? Yeah, Juanita, she is our insurance specialist. So Juanita, why don't you uh, reintroduce yourself to all the guests over here? Sure. Again, my name is Juanita, and I am an insurance agent. Uh, I have been in the insurance company, actually Liberty Mutual, for a little over 30 years. So I'm hoping to oh. provide some information for you today. Awesome. So okay, Claudia, so, yeah. tell us a little bit about home warranty versus home insurance. I thought they were the same. At least yeah, that's what a lot of people tell me. I know. We do get that a lot. Like, oh, home warranty. But no, um, homeowner, homeowner's insurance um, or house insurance is more uh, typically protects your home from events like a fire, smoke, theft, fallen trees, or damaged um, caused by weather or natural disasters. And that's typically paid every month with your mortgage payment. And a home warranty protects um, the, I tell my clients, the stuff inside the house, uh, like appliances or home, sy home systems um, that can break by tear and wear. And that's typically negotiated in the offer and typically covers the first year. Um, I know once you um, close the home and you're in there that the home warranty will email you like to renew and that's up to you if you still want that warranty. It does come in handy for, you know, $75 fee for a technician to come in and do that, but that's for another workshop. <laughs> but um, that is the difference between home warranty and home owner's insurance. Cool. Thank you, Claudia. So some of the most common home insurance claim mistakes, let's get into it. So yeah. number one, failing to read your policy. Claudia, do you read all your contracts? I hope so. I, <laughs> I, I, 
I try, but I always go to my uh, professional advisor. So if, sure. you know, I was getting insurance and Juanita was my rep, I will, you know, trust her to tell me the the fine print in there. But it is important to, you know, also glance at it, look at it. And what I found interesting about this um, uh, misconception is that, you know, sometimes we mistake the like the water backup for a flood insurance claim do you for have sure. any insight on that Juanita so definitely that's one of the issues sometimes that customers we get calls on uh, but you want to make sure that when you are purchasing and that sometimes you might have to look at it after you purchase it to make sure that that is part of your policy so definitely it's an important part because that's usually, um, you know, you don't want to find out about it, you know, later. It's best to try to get most of the information early part. When you Absolutely. No, and I'm glad that uh, Claudia said I, I try to read it because to be honest, you know, we'll read all of it, but do we understand all of it, right? So we can read it, but if we don't understand it, then what good is it reading it? So I, I love Claudia's answer. She says, I try, but I also trust my, my professional, right? So she's going to read it herself, but she's also going to sit down with Juanita and go over the intricacies to make sure that she understands exactly what the differences are. So that way she knows exactly what she's covered for. So yeah, no, I, I love it. Yeah. Next is uh, cleaning up too fast. Bro, do you want to get into that one? Absolutely. Usually when things go wrong in your house, especially if you got a flood or something's going on, the first thing you want to do is clean it up. You just want to get back to normal. But if you clean it up too fast, you might actually be putting yourself at risk. So Juanita, can you share with us a little bit of or some of the risks associated with cleaning up the mess a little bit too fast on whatever you want to do in, uh, in terms of your insurance claim? Yeah, so definitely as a homeowner, if there was ever an issue um, that water was uh, seeping either through the dishwasher, the refrigerator, it, or even a pipe might have burst. The first thing you want to do is reach out to a plumber. You want to stop it immediately. And then the second thing would be to actually reach out to the insurance company so that they could go out and have a um, claims adjuster look and see what the damages are um, and you know start the process because there is a a process that you would have to get, especially for water, water damage. Um, you know, there's the restoration company that will be hired to make sure that that is um, dried and cleaned up. Um, it, it does take a couple of days. So you want to get to them as soon as possible. Water is very important because you don't want it to stay too long because um, the possibility of, of mold. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, plumber, and then reach out to your insurance company to get that taken care of for you. Awesome. Would I, go uh, ahead, Claudia. Would, would I be wrong if I walk in and then there's like all this water everywhere to just, you know, be a Gen C and pull my phone out and start just recording it for evidence? Is that kind of what the insurance would want to, or is that just... Just for your un- records, if you want to keep that information. But, you know, the first thing always try to stop the water uh, uh, if there's a possibility of shutting it off. So it's important for when you buy a home to try to be aware where it is the shut off uh, in case it's something that you don't know where the water is coming from. At least you're able to stop it from the main main line. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so Claudia, before you, you bust out your phone in the middle of your kitchen, that's flooding, make sure you uh, turn off the water shut off <laughs> and yeah. then you can go record. <laughs> I've learned that um, it is very important to learn where your water shut off is, is. And my parents, I once got home and their kitchen sink was um, running and water everywhere. And I had to drive to church to get my dad out of church to get him to stop the water. And he's like, you don't know where the water shot off is. It's right here. So ever since then, I I make it a point that my clients should know where the yeah. water shot off is at their home. And For sure. Different situations where maybe you go on vacation and, uh, you know, it could be a three day vacation, you know, days off or five day. And then you come back to that. It's it's you know, we've I've had it where that has happened. So 
uh, you never know when it's going to happen. But if it if it does, you know, try to make sure that um, uh, you reach out to to the individual um, plumber or even a friend if you have a friend to come and look at your house. Um, you know, while you're out, that's a great up you know thing to do um, to kind of check on your house to try to um, avoid some of these big issues that you might have later on. Okay, cool. So you don't have to wait till the plumber actually fixes the problem to submit the claim. You can just turn off the water at the water shutoff valve, call the plumber, and then call you right after, or, or right. not you, but the insurance? Insurance, yep, claims department, because then they will send out a restoration company and have that um, taken care of for you. Okay, perfect. Now, we're, we are talking about cleaning up too fast. Now, when the plumber gets there, and he fixes whatever he needs to fix just to remediate the problem. At what point do you recommend the homeowners to begin cleaning and getting it comfortable again? Well, most of the time, the restoration company will be called and they will actually help you do that, um, clean up and, and start drying. Um, so a lot of the times you might not even have to do anything because there is a, a service that will be used to take care of that. Awesome, good stuff. And if anybody in the audience has any questions about any of these scenarios that we're going through, feel free to unmute yourself or throw your question in the chat. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. So just go ahead and throw your questions in as, as we go along. Yeah, and this one goes, number three goes hand in hand with the previous one, right? I mean, you don't um, wanna delay uh, filing your claim because it will cause more damage. Um, any insight or tips on that? Number three, Juanita. You know, just um, you know, it does depend a lot um, what the circumstances would be. So, if, let's say water damage, of course, that's the high priority, or fire. Um, you know, you want to get it filed as as soon as possible. Um, there's times when there might be a little bit of a a delay. Maybe there's um, a breaking. Uh, somebody broke into the home. You want to do a, a police report. Um, so that you know might take a little bit to turn in, maybe it's not urgent that, you know, you could wait. Um, sometimes they do ask for a copy of the police report, but a lot of times, you know, you want to report it as soon as possible. Okay. And so let's say something, you know, someone breaks in into my house and I'm kind of, I kind of don't really know that I can file a claim through my home insurance. And then uh, three days later, I speak with Raul and Raul's like, hey, why don't you file a claim? Would that be too late? No, perfect. Um, at times, sometimes you might want to wait um, because there might be a small incident. That's a good question. Um, you always encourage. I always encourage to speak to your client, to your actual insurance agent, because they will help you to see if it, it it's a, actually worth it. Um, and I think we'll talk about it later, but. You know, it depends on your deductible. You might not, if you have a high deductible, you know, and, and the items that they took, I'm just saying maybe a thousand dollars, it might not be worth turning in. So, you know, a good idea is to reach out to your um, insurance agent to discuss that as well. Okay. Fair. Thank I have you. a question for you, Juanita. So yeah. I've actually heard that if you're running even hypotheticals through your homeowner's insurance company, that they're actually going to count against you, that it's not like car insurance, car insurance, you can call and say, Hey, what if I hit a deer? And they'll tell you, I mean, you can sit there all day with hypotheticals, but if you do that with your home, they actually count as many strikes, if you will. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? They're more like red flags, <laughs> red flags. Yeah. <laughs> it depends. Um, if you actually speak to the claims department, then that's basically you're inquiring about a claim. But if you get a chance to speak to your um, insurance agent, you know, and discuss it, a lot of times that's not part of the claim part of it. It's just, is it worth turning in a claim? I had a, a gentleman who had uh, some wind damage and brought, you know, um, brought down the, the fence and the cost to him was going to be about three thousand dollars for one side of the fence, and his deductible is twenty five hundred. So for five hundred dollars, you know, it might not be um, needed to turn in a claim. And we spoke, and he agreed, and uh, just you know that that wasn't a a, a way a, a, enough of a claim to turn in. 
So he didn't call the claim, our claims department and, and he was fine. It's just something just to remember is insurance is there for a catas you know, catastrophic loss. Um, for small incidences, it's, it might not be worth it. Um, just for that, for example, the, the, the example that I just provided. Um, so it, when it, to answer your question, Raul, it's, it just depends a lot of times is you want to speak to your insurance agent and talk about that. Um, but if you do call in to the claims department, then that is a, a claim that might show up and it might not even pay out, but it will show up, especially if you speak to the claims department. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I got a question over here on the chat. So Debbie said, don't you want to determine if it is a sudden occurrence or deferred maintenance, which I understand is not covered. Serve Pro is extremely expensive. Um, on the claims aspect of it, it just depends on the company itself um, when it comes to that particular question. Um, every insurance company has a restoration company. I know the, the question you asked, the company is a restoration company. So it just de really depends. Um, and that's when you want to discuss it to with your uh, in insurance agent to see if that's something that you want to move forward with. All right, let me so see. To follow up, sorry, to follow up with that question is, um, I got a question about, would this be strictly with Liberty or all insurance companies regarding restoration companies coming out? Um, the standard most of the time insurance companies, if it, especially with water damage, you want to have a restoration company go out there and, and take a look at it. If you see it, um, significant water, you know, going to the f damage to the floors, to the drywall. Mm -hmm. um, if it's like, for example, uh, a hose from your sink that you notice that it, it um, loosened up, that's something really immediate that you could just repair yourself. Uh, but it's, you know, you want to call in for the insurance for water damage as soon as possible if it's going to be a significant uh, amount of damage. Thanks. Okay. Um, going back to the other question, Juanita, if I may. Uh, so I, I guess uh, the question really was if when, when something does happen, right, you have an occurrence, should the homeowner try to figure out, was this a sudden occurrence? Like did this happen just because of bad luck? Or was it because I was being a neglectful owner and just didn't do or keep up with my maintenance? Right. And that's where the plumber comes in, because they will give you that um, okay. expertise Got it. of, of uh, you know what, this is a leak or, you know, uh, they'll explain that to you. And then that's when you'll be like, okay, then let me talk to my insurance agent and see if that is something that will help, you know, the insurance company will help me. Um, so definitely the plumber is the expert in, in, res in determining that for you. Got it. So whenever something happens, say it's a plumbing leak, get your plumber out there. Once your plumber's out there, get the debrief, figure out what really happened. And your plumber will tell you, hey, this is just a weird occurrence or this is um, you're just not maintaining your house. Right. And then at that point, whatever your plumber tells you, take it to your insurance agent and then your insurance agent would advise, hey, it might be worth your time or I would refrain from submitting a claim for X, Y, Z reasons. Is that right? Correct. Perfect. Thank you for elaborating. I appreciate it. Yeah. That, and the, that brings us into our last um claim mistake number four, which is failing to maintain your property. So it is very insurance. Um, it's very helpful when you maintain your property. So if you keep up with it, uh, you wouldn't use homeowner's insurance as frequently as you think you you would need it. Um, and we do have a kind of home maintenance checklist. Um, so monthly, you want to check your HV systems and filters, um, inspect uh, the grouts and caulking. So those are the thin um, glue or what is it like gum across the tub. And, and uh, I would describe and, it as the, the white seal to yeah, white get rid of seal. any gaps between, say, the baseboard and the wall, right? Yeah. So. That, that's definitely something that you want to check goes bad every now and then. Yeah, so we'll just leave it here for a couple minutes if you guys want a screenshot for future homeowners or homeowners now. 
you want to um, yeah. have something to maintain any additional information on this at all? No, I mean, I'm, I, I'm just really happy to see this chart here because as homeowners, uh, a lot of the times we just want to get in, make our payment, live our life. But we do have to do a lot of this upkeep that we a lot of times don't even think about. For example, the termites, you want to have a termite inspection done on your house. You know, we recommend once every year. That way you know what's happening with your house because San Diego's notorious for termite work, right? And you can let that add up. And 10 years later, you're going to have a 10 grand bill. <laughs> so that's uh, simple things to help you avoid these really big bills down the line, as well as these really complicated insurance claims. But if anybody wants a copy of, of this particular checklist after, just send us a message and we'll send it to you as well. Yeah. And also, I'm going to reshare the Google and Yelp um, link. So feel free to leave us a review after or before. Um, to, you know, help us keep these workshops going. Yeah, for sure. And that way we're able to present the content that you want to hear as well. Yeah. Oh, I think that was, sorry. I don't know why I did that. I think, oh, well, we're not at Q&A yet. So do I... Before we get into uh, Juanita's presentation, I wanted to ask the group if there were any questions. Meanwhile, we transition to the, to the next half of the year. If you do have any questions, feel free to just unmute yourself, throw your questions into the chat aside from that. All right, Guillermo. Yes, hey, how's it going, everyone? Hey, Guillermo. Yeah, so I have a question. Uh, so um, I know Juanita works with Liberty and um, hearing, I've been seeing lately a lot in the news that uh, a lot of insurance companies are starting to no longer insure uh, homes or uh, do new policies in the state of, in the state of California. Uh, where is that? Uh, where do things stand with Liberty? Um, most insurance companies, I'm just going to generalize it. Um, mm -hmm. Most insurance companies uh, do have the capability of having other options. Um, usually, if the most common ones, perhaps, if you cannot get insurance is either because you have too many claims, more than two or three claims, and insurance companies um, that you would normally purchase insurance would not be able to offer you a policy. Um, another has been maybe it's close to a fi high probability of fire. That's another reason why you, your normal homeowner's insurance company would not be able to get it. Um, you would be able to purchase it. So you would go through what we call California Fair Plan, which will cover the fire, the wind, and um, hail. And then you would have to uh, purchase an additional policy to cover you for the general liability water damage. Um, so instead of having one policy to cover everything, uh, you would have to obtain two policies to cover you all uh, overall. So there, there's you know there's a possibility where there, you might have a difficulty um, getting insurance, but but there are options available out there for you, and most. Um, insurance agencies will have that capability of providing you uh, a, a quote, at least to give you an idea of how much the rate is. Definitely, it will be a little bit more, um, but it, it is available. It's not that it, you're not going to be able to find insurance. You will be able to get some insurance. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you for asking that question, Guillermo. Good question. Uh, Claudia, go ahead and uh, let's throw up Juanita's presentation here. Let's get into what she has to go over for us now. All right. Juanita, well, you can. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You'll let me know when you want me to yeah, go to next. All right. So, well, my, again, my name is Juanita Dame, and I've um, been an insurance agent for about a little over 30 years. Uh, very fortunate to be an agent for Liberty Mutual. Um, just recently, we are now capable of insuring through um, with other companies. Um, so now they added uh, Comparion Insurance Agency as part of our name through Liberty Mutual. Um, the, the thing about that I usually try to kind of answer. Um, so on, as you see on the screen, um, these are some of the questions or some of the things that you might have uh, in respect to insurance. Um, the, will you have coverage to pay repairs for my home or condo? Uh, if someone stole my computer or a golf cart, uh, you know, anything to do with um, a car, 
personal property in your vehicle, is that covered? Um, is there any damage to my structure? Is that covered? Um, if you need to stay somewhere else while my home is being repaired, is that covered? Some of these things you might not realize you are covered for um, or not covered. Um, so it's a good idea to make sure that when you purchase a home or even a condominium or a rent or even rent, these are some of the things that you want to take in consideration when it comes to uh, being covered under a homeowner policy. Um, next screen. Um, I just wanted to mention what we will entail in coverage. Uh, so if you could look, you know, the homeowner's insurance, when we purchase a home, some of the coverages that will be covered will be the building, the dwelling, we call it dwelling. Uh, plus, you will also have other structure coverage, which is anything to do with a fence, a cabana, um, maybe a detached garage that is also included under the other structure. Uh, personal property is included on your policy, which will be clothing, furniture, appliances. That's all under the uh, personal property. Loss of use of your residence. This would be in case you, when you purchase your home, uh, let's say there is a claim that is caused either water damage or fire, um, and you had to stay somewhere else, then this portion of it will cover your cost if you stay somewhere else. So if it takes six months, nine months, 12 months, or even 24 months for your home to be rebuild or if there was a, a catastrophic loss um, or even some water damage, you know, it might take six months, ninth months to get your flooring done, then this coverage will pay the rent um, while your home is being repaired. Um, homeowners also will include liability. So you're saying liability, we hear it a lot on our auto insurance. The same thing happens sometimes on our homes. So liability would be in case someone is injured and um, you, know, you could have an event at your residence and somebody uh, you know, maybe trips, falls, breaks their arm. Um, you know, most of the times we have health insurance, but then if, the dam if there's more damage or injury to, to them, then there'll be a little bit more cost to them. So, they could always sue us and that's where this comes in. You wanna protect yourself against the possibility of a lawsuit. And then medical payment, um, it could be a small incident, you know, usually it's either a thousand or 2000, then this will come in. So homeowners, uh, the first line is, is pretty much all the coverages that are available. Under a condominium, it's, pretty, it's the, almost the same except other structure. And then on a renters, it's everything else except the building and other structures. So these are pretty standard coverages that as a homeowner condo or a renter, you want to take in consideration when it comes to looking for insurance. Um, on the next screen, uh, one of the things once the, your insurance agents recommends your coverages, and of course, every, every person is different. So what I might buy, for my home might be different with Claudia's home or Raul's home. So one of the things though um, to take in consideration or um, look at is considering a deductible. I know sometimes I get a lot of customers who ask, um, you know, how could I reduce my premium? And that's when the deductible comes in. You, you Did know, my screen what? change? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. sorry. I'm like, I try to clear something out and it went somewhere okay. else. So the deductible um, is where you have the flexibility of helping reduce your premium. Um, I've had customers who um, maybe had a, a claim and maybe they're not getting a discount because of that. So one of the things that we look at is we don't really want to change the coverages because the coverages are the way that they are because that's what you need but maybe look at um, deductibles. You know, maybe they have a 500, maybe consider having a thousand or 2,500. All that is, is that you're uh, at an, an, in a situation where there is a claim, you're gonna take more out of your pocket um, at the time of a claim and save today. So if 
if nothing happens in one year, meaning no claim is reported, two years, three years, during that time you've been saving. So in a way, if you're not, you know, we never know when we're gonna turn in a claim, but if not, you'll be able to consider increasing your deductible and do a savings if that that's something that you wanna look at. So, what's the uh, most common deductible? I see several options here for a home. What's, yeah, usually, what, what's average? Usually I've seen between 1,000 and 2,500. You know, those are nowadays the most common uh, deductibles that I've, I've seen. Oh, okay, cool. Good stuff. Okay. And of course there's other options. So you always wanna consider those too. Yeah, okay. and just to reiterate the deductible, that's what you as the homeowner would have to pay in the event of a claim before the insurance dishes out not even a penny, correct? Well, in a way, almost there. Um, so basically, it, let's say there was a claim and the damage is $10,000 and my deductible is 1000 They'll subtract the, the deductible and provide me with an, the difference. Ah, so okay. I could start it. So, you, you, you know, it sounds like, yeah, you have to pay the first 1000 but not necessarily. They'll subtract that from your, from your um, payout and you'll have funds to start repairing those. So... Um, good question on that one. <laughs> um, additional coverages that you might want to keep in mind when purchasing or looking or reviewing your current homeowners or condominium policy is the water backup. I know we talked about it earlier, um, and we see that a lot on condominiums. Um, so make sure you um, might want to consider make sure that you have that in there uh, for coverage. Um, home computers. Um, I had an example where a customer uh, was out, had their work computer or personal computer and they left it in their vehicle. Well, that's personal property. They, they, they thought they could uh, claim it under the auto insurance, but a computer is a personal property. So they would have to claim it under their homeowners or condominium or renter's insurance. So that's an additional coverage that is available. Now is that something that you would recommend even trying to do a claim on? Absolutely. Um, it's very inexpensive to add that on there. Um, oh, okay. So, you know, if you can make sure you add it um, because there's a difference of having a full replacement or it might be too small. Let's say if I had a thousand dollar deductible and um, my, comp you know, my laptop is five, I'm just saying 500, it's not yeah. that, but um, you know, if you don't have that endorsed and your deductible is a thousand, there's nothing that's gonna be paid out. So Got that it. endorsement will very be very helpful. When it and to do those types of claims for personal property also go against you when you're looking for insurance? You, you know, is, for example- That is like, correct. Like, hey, this guy Raul came up on three MacBooks, like <laughs> no more insurance for this guy. <laughs> yep, exactly. Right. And, and that's something that you want to consider before you turn in a claim. So yes, that cool. is a, a something that you definitely want to think about. Awesome. Um, but it's available if you need it. Um, of course, we do have identity theft protection. Most insurance companies will have that available. Uh, and then lastly, scheduling property. A lot of times we're so concerned about our home, which is important, uh, but sometimes if we forget there are certain things when it comes to jewelry that are need to be scheduled. We call them scheduled. You do pay a little bit more for that, but I have, um, you know, by experience, my um, wedding ring, there was a uh, dime, the diamond fell and, uh, you know, if I, ha I had it scheduled, so it had full replacement. So subject to not, no deductible. So very, very important to have that if you have a wedding ring, a diamond, um, you know, engagement ring, as well as any uh, jewelry, you know, watches, nice watches, if you have nice watches or any additional um, jewelry that you might have. Sometimes we have inheritance. So those are items that you might want to um, get appraised and, and consider scheduling. Um, I've had many people that have had some fine art as well. We forget about those fine arts or collections, you know, paintings or um, my kids um, like to collect, um, what do you call them? Those um, cartoon items that 
they, you know, most of the kids uh, are collecting and that's a collection. So you want to make sure you have those scheduled. Okay. Okay. And then next, oh. um, since, you know, depending on if you're purchasing a home or you currently have insurance, some of the things that you might want to consider and look at um, that you have the first time buyer discount. Those mm -hmm. most insurance companies will have that first time buyer discount. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to yes. call them. Yep. And then um, we have the multi-policy, which is sometimes um, known as bundling. You know how most uh, companies, um, you know, uh, will have that bundle. That's when you do it like your house, your car, your motorcycle, all in one type of deal? Correct. And so take advantage of that. I've, I've gotten calls where, oh, I have my cars with this insurance company. I'm looking for homeowners. I always try to recommend, try to reach first who you have your auto or your home and ask them what the rate is with them because you're going to benefit on that multi-policy bundle package so it's always important to have that when you're looking for insurance um, there's also um, early shopper discounts um, you know if you know your renewals coming up next month or maybe 45 days from now consider looking early so that you could benefit on the, that discount what um, if uh, I'm going to buy a house? I, I'm already pre-approved. I'm currently shopping right now, and I know I'm going to buy a house pretty soon. Can I begin the process now and get that early shopper discount, or is that only for renewals? No, no, absolutely. It's whenever you start looking that that's the opportunity to to look. And um, and that's a, that's a good point, too, Raul. Um, when you're purchasing a home, you want to make sure you're ahead. Uh, because a lot of times the lenders are asking for proof of insurance uh, at least minimum two two weeks before you actually close. Mm -hmm. um, but you also want to make sure that the home is insurable. Um, there are certain areas, and it could be within the city. Um, if you're like by a canyon, that's something that might um, either be a little tough, not hard, but just you might have a little hiccup. So you want to make sure you you uh, try to provide the um, get the insurance quote as soon as possible but um but no no that discount is is available to everyone if if you can oh okay um, cool so i could potentially get my clients a discount by saying hey i know we're currently shopping we haven't found your house yet but talk to juanita go ahead and start your your policy so when we do find you that address you could just plug it in and you'll get a, a, an additional discount is that how that would work uh, no, no, no. Just if it's a new purchase for you. Got it. So I guess either way, you're getting a, a discount as a first you're time buyer. It, yeah. Okay. And then um, I think I saw somebody raise their hand. Um, if, yeah. If you still have a question, feel free to unmute yourself or, or just throw your, your question in the chat. Yeah, I did. Um, so I just have a question for Juanita. Is it, um, it sounds like it's kind of similar, but not really. Um, how do they quote? like your home policy? Because for auto insurance, I know it fluctuates based on your zip code. So I can go up and down. Is that the same for a home? There's many factors. Um, there's factors on the year built of the home, the square footage of the home. Um, yes, of course, it, the city where it's located, um, they do have like a fire um, area that they look at as well. Um, your occupation because there's discounts if you have an alarm system there's many factors and us as insurance agents we make sure that we take that in consideration for you to make sure that we're, the quote that we're going to provide you includes all those discounts and as well as the type of coverage that you will need do they do they take in consideration um the condition as far as like i i'm buying a remodeled home versus an original home um, that's a good question. It just depends. And everything could could be different. Every um, buyer, it could be a different situation. Um, there are certain credits for renovations. Um, the most common that you might want to consider or remember is if the electrical, electrical has been completely uh, renovated, plumbing been renovated, uh, heating and air, and a roof. So those are some of the uh, renovations that if you did or that property has the, those done that you might want, you want to get 
uh, that information to the uh, uh, insurance agent to make sure that they have that and possibly have uh, additional credits or additional discounts. Are they going to ask for the license contractor or roofer license or can, because I done those upgrades, but they weren't. They need within. some form of documentation. Sometimes if it's the contractor, um, they, and again, every insurance company is different, yeah. but you know, they could ask for um, Proof. a summary of the contractor of all those items being done. Okay. I think um, and the question, I mean, the question I have is, does it have to be a licensed contractor or can I get my uncle to do it? <laughs> he's um, a handyman, but he'll, he'll give me an invoice yeah. on paper, you know, but he's, yeah. he's a handyman, unlicensed. Yeah. And again, every insurance company is different, but definitely that, you know, when, because there's times where you do these items on your own as a, you know, I've had my uh, um, heater replaced. So I, I, you know, I had somebody do it for me. And um, as long as it's, you know, the item is there, uh, you know, it definitely, the, the key is the insurance could be, every insurance company is gonna be different. So I can't really say, okay, this is what they're gonna take. Um, but if the item was done, you know, they'll take that, give that to them and you never know. So like in your yeah. experience, will they typically ask for some sort of documentation? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and then sure. um, there is a claim free discount um, there, like, like you mentioned, the renovation um, home discount that definitely and the new purchase um, discount. Those are things that you want to make sure that you keep that in mind when you're speaking to your insurance agent. Okay. Okay. And then next. So what is my homeowner's insurance cover? Now that we figured, okay, I need coverage for my dwelling, other structure, personal property, liability. So what is it gonna cover? Um, you know, the most common, we call them perils that we, is covered is fire, uh, windstorms. Like we've had some windstorms this spring, so, um, winter. So that is also included in there. Lightning, theft, smoke, vehicle damage. Your, if a vehicle collides into the residence, we've heard that, you know, sometimes in the news that has happened. Uh, fallen object, a tr you know, a tree, most common thing that could possibly happen and water damage. These are some of the most common things that will cover. It, most insurance companies will cover. And again, um, you know, it just, depends on the incident and the amount of loss that has happened. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions on that? No. Okay. And the main reason, of course, buyer, the lender will not lend you money if you don't have, you know, they want to make sure that the home is rebuilt. So that's the most important reason why um, yeah. we want to make sure you have insurance. That is um, true. So those items that I mentioned, fire, lightning, those are the most common, but of course there are other additional coverages that you might wanna make sure you have. Uh, earthquake insurance is separate. So you wanna have that um, in, um, in consideration too for earthquake. If you have a business, you also, that's an additional endorsement that you might need to include. Um, I mentioned scheduled jewelry, um, flood insurance. So when flood insurance is water from the outside coming into the residence. Um, so if you live next to uh, a low area, if, if it's determined to have be in a flood zone, um, close to a canal, close, of course, to the ocean um, is another place where you might want to be required um, from the lender if you are in a flood zone. So that's a separate policy that you would have to purchase. Um, and of course, there is an endorsement for personal property replacement. Um, and that would be, for example, if you have a TV and, and it, you know, there's a loss, fire, whatever the, the loss could be, it's going to be with this replacement, it's going to be replaced at today's prices, not at a depreciated value. So you want to make sure you have that endorsement. And life insurance is a separate policy that you would have um, purchased um, 
especially if you purchased a new home, there's, we call it mortgage protection in case something does happen to either one of the parties that purchased the home, that they'll have some supplemental income in case there is a lo uh, life loss um, and you, you know, you get to, uh, unfortunately, the passing, but, um, you know, family is able to stay at the residence. So that's also something that you want to consider. Okay. And about how much more is it to include um, any of these extra additional coverage? It, it varies? Definitely, it, there is, it's hard to tell you what it is, but, you know, for example, earthquake, it could be depending, you know, as low as a hundred dollars, because that's usually the basic on a small residence um, and up. So it's, you know, that's a hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Get quotes if those are the items that you want to be covered for. And you could either purchase it at that moment or you could late purchase it later on. Okay. Cool. That's why, awesome. is, why is it earthquake insurance part of the, like just regular insurance if we're like an earthquake state? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it's a separate, it's always been a separate policy. Um, and in California, we have the California Earthquake Authority who okay. offers the insurance through them. And then there's other, another company, a couple other companies that will do it separately as well. But um, it is a separate policy that is available. Sounds okay. like it's just been common practice since forever. <laughs> Sounds like I need to start a petition <laughs> to all our attendees well, tonight, everybody. Is, you want to have it separate because it's, it's not a required um, coverage. Mm -hmm. Um, if we add it on the homeowners, then your insurance on your home is going to, especially when you buy a home, um, you don't want to make, you know, you want to have it reasonable on the homeowners and then have that option to have the earthquake separate. Yeah, that, no, that that's awesome. Have you ran into anybody, and I'm sure you probably have, anybody who said, nope, I don't want any extras. Give me the bare minimum. Just give me the basic insurance. I want as cheap as possible. I just spent so much on my house. I don't want to spend on insurance. And then boom, something goes wrong. Definitely it is. It ha that, that has occurred. And, um, you know, we always try to recommend. And there's a reason why we recommend. Um, but I, you know, you try to give examples. And um, do you have one for us? I'd love to hear one. <laughs> um, probably the one that is the most that um, I remember is um, a gentleman who just wanted, like you said, just fire. I just want fire coverage, fire coverage. Um, and we did provide that, um, that coverage. Um, and then this, this particular situation where a claim came on his personal property and um, he did not have coverage for that. So, um, you know, sometimes you want to recommend and you tell them, okay, this is what you need to have. And, and, you know, we'll establish that. And if they decide, you know what, I don't want that. It's noted in their file so that to make sure that they are aware that that is something they wanted to be excluded. So you never want to not have insurance, but of course you don't want to overpay, but you do want to have the proper coverage. And as, us as in, we're, in a, we're licensed insurance agents. So you want to make sure that your insurance agent is recommending certain coverages. You want to have those coverages because you don't want to be uh, told you, you were not covered for that. Got yeah, it. we that had a sense. client mad at us for holding their closing there were cash buyers and we as their agents recommend them to get insurance even if they're cash buyers mm -hmm. and it's not required but they were so mad that we were you know said no we can't close until you you know get insurance and they're like we'll do it tomorrow we'll do it tomorrow but it's it's just like one of those stories of you know you buy a car you drive it for a couple of days thinking like, I'm going to get that done. And then next thing you know, boom, here comes the car and you don't have insurance. Coverage. Exactly. Yeah, coverage. So exactly. it is very important to have yeah. it. And, and I've had also condominium um, before, just like you, if they paid cash and the association covers the exterior, 
of the of the building and you're responsible for the walls in and it's if you're not don't have a loan they're not requiring you to have it so you know and it, and it's not that much but this particular customer says you know what i paid for it i I'll, I, I'll, I have i don't need that insurance to cover myself and then there was a water damage so things like that unfortunately have happened um, but hopefully with some of this you know like your seminar um, that informs customers that are owners or purchase are planning to purchase that it's important to um, reach out to their insurance agent and make sure that they're properly covered. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Any uh, other questions that or anything that you guys want to shine light on and or just get clarification with insurance rep? I can't, I think all my questions were answered. Uh, any additional thoughts, anything? The only thoughts I have is uh, thank you. I, I just learned a thing or two about insurance that I didn't know it, before. And I think that this is just a testament that we always got to be educating ourselves, learning about different topics, different things. No matter if you feel like you already know it, you can always learn at least one thing more than what you knew yesterday about it. So we threw in Juanita's website on the chat. And we also threw in our, our Eventbrite page that advertises all of our workshops, as well as uh, our YouTube page, as well as all the links to the reviews. So again, last friendly reminder, I swear, this is uh, for any reviews, any feedback is important feedback, whether we can do something a little bit better or whether you just enjoyed it from A to Z, we wanna hear from you guys. But I wanna thank everybody for taking time out of their Tuesday to sit here and talk insurance with us, right? <laughs> yeah, well, one last uh, reminder, we have our next class that's happening in June, but since June is already on in thurs uh, Thursday, so it's June first. Uh, workshop is the financial literacy for adults, and that class is given by Voltaire Lepis. So I highly recommend it. Is like I mean, I attend it every time, and every time it reminds me I could do better, be better. So uh, financial literacy for adults. Uh, I can enter well the link is there for our event page so you can find the details there yeah. if not reach out to your realtor here at leopard tent well and they will provide you with that information and just like anything else when you do get educated you want to get educated by the right people that's why today's insurance workshop was given by juanita not by raul the realtor and claudia right uh yeah. With that being said, the budgeting workshop is going to be hosted by, again, Voltaire Lepe, a millionaire himself. He became a millionaire at like 31 or 32 years old. So he definitely knows a thing or two about money. So go ahead and register for that workshop too. And I hope to see you guys on Thursday. Thank you guys for joining tonight. Have yeah, thank you, Juanita. This was thank very you. helpful. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thanks for joining, Lucinda. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for joining, Janelli. Do I just log off? We say good night. Good night.